Hey guys, that's Rick. That's Cher. We have a very exciting video. Our most popular video is the, the video of our camper and, and I just redid it. Cut together differently, it's all re-edited. I think it made a much better version. It's actually in two parts. So the first part is gonna be a tour. We will point you to another video where Rick is talking about all the construction and fun stuff that the guys will love, right? Right. You ready? Yep. Let's go. Last fall, we decided that it was time to gracefully retire or at least semi-retire. And we decided to convert this over into a camper. For the last 50 years, I've been primarily tent camping. And so this whole experience was a little bit new to me, but I had some ideas about how to go about achieving what I wanted to do with the space and how to best utilize it for my needs. And so we're going to show you some videos of the areas of the trailer and how it was constructed and why. The cabinets were unfinished cabinets purchased from Home Depot. And I merely lightly sanded them and finished them with a waterproof varnish or waterproof polyurethane. These are primarily going to be used for clothing storage for myself and Sharon when we're on our trips. I've got an LED light underneath of the cabinets so it can act as a reading light or an ambiance light in the evening when you don't want to have the overhead light on. Now the overhead light in the trailer is not an LED, but it was the original light. The ceilings in here are actually made up of quarter inch plywood underlayment that was only about $13 a sheet, but it had such beautiful grain in it. Once I got it up, I decided I would varnish it. Originally, I was going to just paint it white. Said so the bed is typical staggered slats. You lift the seat cushion up, pull it forward. Slide the cushion out. Back cushion folds down. Now the foam panels were originally each 24 inches. So in order to make it feasible to have a low back like this, I cut six inches off of the one panel and taped it onto the other one before I built the cushions. Since he's almost six foot and he likes to sleep with his arms behind his head, a seven foot wide trailer would have been way better for that. So we usually sleep the other way, which means the bed's not quite long enough. So we just pull over our heavy duty plastic bin that we keep our linens in and put our feet on that. The windows I bought from eBay, they are new windows rather than purchase used. Sharon's granddaughter made the curtains in the trailer out of a piece of fabric that we purchased at the Joanne Fabrics. And we didn't originally have these baskets in here, but the utensil drawer was starting to get full with all the little miscellaneous stuff. And I decided to add these uh, for someplace else to put it so we could keep that drawer from getting too clogged up. The kitchen area is something that I had envisioned for a long time if I were ever going to do one of these cargo conversions. I wanted to have a sink with hot and cold water and we do have a water heater in the rear of the trailer. I've got a refrigerator and freezer with separate doors. This looks a little rustic, but it's merely here to keep the microwave from sliding around when the trailer is being transported. Once we arrive at the site, that comes off and, and goes away. I've also got a television up here and a television antenna. And I just purchased a through wall jack to be able to put the antenna outside the trailer to get better reception. We've got drawer storage and doors, cabinets up above. I've put pressure latches on these things so they want to stay tight but i also use these bungee cords when we're traveling and just merely wrap them around the knobs on the cabinets here battery operated lights from five below because sometimes in the evenings it's a little dark to see what uh, you're looking for in here so each of these cabinets has an interior light that i can use when i really feel i need it we've got the little baskets on the side that uh, we picked up in one of the home decor stores they just screw on the wall, but these are for our odds and ends. Okay, this is the what's typically called the garage of the trailer. In the back, we have the rear of the air conditioner. I've got a cabinet above, again, with friction latches on it so that it stays closed. 
We do have a shower in the back, so Rick rigged up this rod that we can hang up a shower curtain. I'm going to take a look at the propane heater that I installed in the trailer. It's a unit that is produced by TCMT. It's a Chinese brand. There are probably 50 other companies out there building the same unit with somebody else's name on it. But it's basically a six liter instantaneous propane water heater. It uses two flashlight batteries to provide the power for the igniter, all the sensors, and the uh, LED readout of the temperature. It hooks up to a propane bottle. It's instantaneous and will provide as much hot water as you can use because it's heating it as fast as it goes through the the unit and it really is very uh, pr free of any kind of problems. I was really impressed with how easy it was to install and how easy it is to operate and how well it works and it was like 70 bucks to buy this unit on the internet so there's a link in our uh, bottom of our description and you can check it out yourself. The shower. Doing there Rick. Running a 12 volt pump. I got a first pretty much charge the system with water. Okay, well it definitely has a good stream. Or is that only when it first comes out? It's supposed to keep a good stream on it. Regardless, but this hose, I'm gonna have to put something on this to keep it rigid, straight. Like a weight? Well, or stick. Okay. To keep it straight so it stays down in the water. Alright, but this will keep it rigid and... Awesome. It's immediate. Oh yeah, it is. Pretty cool. Oh, now it's burning hot. I'm going to peek on Sharon because I think she's taking a shower. Woo! What are you doing there? Again, I don't like anything dragging on the roof more than necessary. So they elevate the boats up off the roof. I uh, carpeted the cross members and I didn't intentionally did not use pressure treated for the sideboards. And that's why they're wrapped with waterproof material. That's just for two by fours. And even those side members, there's no penetration of the roof. They're on brackets that screw into the side of the trailer than anything on top. We recently purchased this instant canopy that we just love. It's very easy to put up. We actually have a video of us putting it up. I'll put that link up here. That's kind of funny. And we also just bought walls that we can add to this canopy for when we camp in the cooler weather. We can put a heater in there. It's great. Probably the question we get asked most of the time is where is our bathroom? So I will show you. In the cabinet under the sink, we have just a bucket with a seat and we can put bags in there and chips in there if we want. The truth is we rarely use it. Most of the time when we camp, we are at somewhere where there's a bathhouse and a shower. So this is for emergency use only and is rarely used. We don't have solar for a couple of reasons. Number one, it really wasn't in our budget. But to be honest with you, we really don't camp in places where we don't have access to electricity most of the time. On those occasions when we do camp at a site with no hookup, we do have an inverter generator. But I hope you enjoyed the updated tour of our camper. Now, the next video, I'm going to put a link to it right up here. But that video is going to talk more about the construction piece of it. So it's a little bit more technical. The guys will probably love it. But 
like I said, check right up there and you will see that video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like our video.